Side Hustle Show 87, the five-step system to quit your job in the next 12 months. Welcome to the Side Hustle Show, where aspiring part-time entrepreneurs learn how to turn their side hustle dreams into reality. Because your nine to five may make you a living, but your five to nine makes you alive. And now your host, Nick Loper. Happy New Year, Nick Loper here. Welcome to the Side Hustle Show and welcome to 2015. It's the future. This is episode 87, the five-step system to quit your job in the next 12 months. And this is going to be a great year. And this is the perfect episode to kick off the year because if you take action on the five steps my guest shares in this episode, it could be the last year you spend working for somebody else. How sweet would that be? Brian Harris is here from videofruit.com and he gives us a straightforward way to begin earning real money outside of a day job. So if that sounds appealing to you, I think you're really going to love this one. Plus, you'll have to listen for the uh, the awkward moment when uh, when Brian catches me off guard by asking me what I'm selling. So all my notes and highlights from the call are available to you in a free downloadable PDF at sidehustlenation.com slash 87 or through the link in the uh, episode description of your podcast player app. Uh, news and updates before we get into it. I uh, just got back from our annual trip home to Seattle for Christmas, and I've got a, a to-do list a mile long, buzzing with a ton of new project ideas to get started uh, with this month for the rest of the year. It's going to be uh, it's going to be fun stuff to uh, to get working on that. Uh, while I was up there, hosted a little uh, side hustle meetup, which was a ton of fun and great to see everyone and talk shop. So thank you guys for for coming out to that. Definitely plan to do more of these that kind of style of informal meetups and events just for drinks and dinner and stuff uh, this year and beyond wherever my my travels happen to uh, to bring me uh, but the only way to be notified of that is to join uh, the email list at sidehustlenation.com and later this month we're going to begin a new round of the uh, of the side hustle nation inner circle mastermind so i'll talk a little bit more uh, about it at the end of the show but if you want to learn more jump over to sidehustlenation.com slash join drop in an application and we'll set up a quick uh, intro call all right ready to quit your job in uh, in 2015 or in the next 12 months let's hear how to get it done hey brian welcome to the side hustle show hey thanks for having me on nick Everybody, Brian Harris, if you don't know, he's founder of videofruit.com, which is honestly one of the smartest um, online business and marketing blogs that you're going to find because of the way he reverse engineers the the ideas uh, that work and puts them into actionable step-by-step guides for his readers. Definitely one of my favorite sites to check out for that kind of stuff. And that leads us to today, right? If you have the goal and this may be a, a big and daunting goal, the goal of quitting your job this year or in the next 12 months, whenever you're listening to this, you know, we can work backwards from that end game and see what it's going to take to get there and see if we can come up with an action plan to, uh, to implement and begin uh, taking positive steps toward that goal and bring Brian on because he's, he's walked the path and he's kind of shared the, the steps along that journey. And uh, curious to see what um, what might be in store for Side Hustle Nation on this on this path as well. So, Brian, welcome. And what would be what would be the first step if somebody is working full time and they want out, and they're just like, "I'll take I'll take anything." <laughs> uh, I, I think the key the, it just depends on your purpose. So, I'll just tell my own story, and then you can um, make application how needed to your own life if you're listening. So with me, my number one goal uh, in 2013 was to leave my day job. I didn't really care what I was doing. I just wanted out. So I was trying to find the quickest way to make money working for myself. And what I found was there's three different ways to make money online. Uh, You can sell advertising on a site that has a lot of traffic. I didn't have a site. I didn't have a lot of traffic, so that was not an option. Um, You can offer a product, offer a course or a physical product or a book or any type of physical product or thing that you sell, or you can offer a service. So product, service, advertising. Um, Service is the quickest way to make money. Um, You don't have to have a thing. You don't have to have business cards. You don't have to have a website. You don't have to have anything. All you have to do is identify a problem you're trying to fix. Um, So for me, what I was doing was offering video content for popular marketing blogs. So I went to a site. um, I followed Neil Patel, quicksprout.com. Loved his content, loved his teaching, learned a lot from him. 
And I was trying to find a service to offer, so I, I approached Neil and noticed that he never did video. I went to his Kiss Metrics blog, the company that he owns. Okay. And really popular blog, generates ton, generates the majority of the leads to their company, but they never used video in their content. Yet, Neil taught about video quite uh, frequently on his Quick Sprout blog, but never used it. So what I did was um, found the problem. They weren't using video. Video converts really well. Uh, they relied on their content to produce leads, and I offered to fix that for them. So what I did was went and found uh, one of their most popular infographics that they made. And if you know anything about Kiss Metrics, you know they make uh, infographics all the time. And it's one of their top uh, link building strategies is to make these high-quality infographics, pass them out, get links back to their site, which generates leads and which generates business. Mm -hmm. So I found their most popular infographic and turned it into a video and gave it to them. I said, hey, Neil, this is Brian. Uh, I know you like video. I know you don't use video. I made a video from one of your most popular pieces of content. Would you be interested? And he was. So step number one, identify a problem. You have to have a problem. I don't want you to have an idea, not something you think um, needs to exist in the world that doesn't. I just Keep it even simpler than that because all that's vague, hard to validate, and is long term. Like you can get to that later. If your main goal is leaving your day job, find the problem to fix first. And in this case, the problem was, hey, look, you're, you're missing the boat on not using video. You know, you know, I know these leads have value to you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be investing in creating these infographics. But you're, you're, they're, they're just, you're leaving something on the table by not having video. Now, did you have um, you know, some, some video skills, some background in, in how to create this stuff? Or was it just like, I'm going to learn this because this is the hole in the market that I see? Yeah, not really. I really had not much of a background at all. I think it's interesting... Almost any detailed how-to post can be turned into a service. So I read a post uh, back in March of this year. I wanted to do an experiment to see if I could repeat this service-based approach. Okay. So I found an interesting blog post that I think Heaton Shaw wrote. I could be wrong on that. But it was a strategy on how to grow your Twitter following. And the basic gist was of it to follow people, and a percentage of the people you follow will follow you back. And favorite tweets, and a percentage of the people who tweet you favorite will follow you back. So just do that over and over and over and over again, and your Twitter following will build up. So I did that for my own, for the Video Fruit Twitter account, which is at like six or 7,000 people. Um, and it was at zero. I started doing that and built it up to six or 7,000 people. Okay. And then I wanted to see if I could offer that as a service. I knew a pain, the pain point was people wanted more people to follow them on Twitter. Um, so the second step of the process, so step one, identify the problem. Step number two, re-engineer your solution into a service. So don't create an iPhone app. Don't make a website. Don't start writing blog posts. <laughs> Take the pain point and offer to fix that pain point for somebody. And you can literally, whatever, and let's say you're in internet marketing because that's the world I'm in. Um, you could go find a list of, you could go find a blog post that teaches you how to do something. For example, Brian Dean at Backlinko has a, has an article called the, the Skyscraper Formula or the Skyscraper Technique. Okay. And it teaches for you for systematically SEO. how to get, yeah, how to do SEO by getting backlinks. So I had a video for a reader named Keith who wanted to do um, what I was doing. He wanted to quit his day job, start a service-based business, and eventually maybe turn it into a product-based business. So he started offering the skyscraper technique as a service to everybody that had shared that post on social media, which is an interesting route because you have a built-in customer base. You have a, you have a problem. I need uh, want more traffic from search engines. You have a solution that you've never offered before, but Brian Dean has taught. So you're literally just doing the steps in his blog post for people. And step number three, which is choose one person you want to work with, can easily be solved by going to a site like Topsy, typing in the URL to the blog post or the service you're offering, and getting a list of all the people that have shared that blog post. So these are people that have shared the blog post, are familiar with Brian, are familiar with the service, but nine times out of ten aren't actually doing what's in the blog post because it's a lot of work. Yeah. And you're going to offer to do what they shared for their business. Oh, that's which is a really interesting approach. <laughs> yeah, that's fascinating. I would never have have thought to like you know reach out to the people sharing because I do that all the time. Oh, hey, this sounds fantastic. Or even if it just has a compelling, I'll share stuff without even reading the thing because it's a good title. Like oh, that sounds catchy, you know, and, and you hit you know add it to your buffer and whatever. And then oh, that's really like for those detailed how to posts. Somebody else has done the legwork for you. Yeah, and then you just have to systemize it or, or offer a service just do what it says like literally just do the blog post that's it yes yeah. um, <laughs> because and you don't have to have experience because you're uh, brian is not vetting you so you're not saying brian told me to contact you but you're saying hey you you trust brian dean 
I want to do what he taught for you. So it doesn't matter what my experience is then. You've used that kind of a third leg and used Brian to validate you because you're not doing anything of your own accord. You're doing it based on Brian's advice. And people trust Brian. People trust Rand Fishkin at Moz. So if you take one of Rand's posts or one of his whiteboard Friday tactics he teaches, turn that into a service, offer it to the people that commented on the blog post, that shared the blog post, or somebody that just needs to be doing it that would know of Rand, then you immediately kind of leech off some of his credibility by just doing what he's saying and offering it as a service. Because a lot of those techniques are incredibly um, effective, incredibly useful, but implementing them is tough. And people only have so many time, so much time in the day. So going out and spending 20 hours finding people to email to get them to backlink to my blog post probably just is not going to happen unless somebody else does it. So if I share that article on Twitter and express interest in it and raise my hand and say, yes, I like Brian, I like this article, and an hour later, somebody emails me and say, hey, I would like, I noticed you shared that article. I would like to do that for you. Would you be interested? That's an easy yes. Yeah, what's, what's that worth to you? Very cool. What, what about if I'm trying to, if I have a skill that's, you know, that I feel comfortable selling on my own or I, like I have a particular, um, you know, expertise in some area, but I'm not sure if there is a, if that's like a problem that needs to be solved, like, I don't know if I'm if I'm the you know the, the skill that always comes up is like I'm the graphic designer I'm the copywriter I'm the you know web developer those are kind of easy ones but I'm trying to think of what would be you know how to validate that problem in the marketplace instead of going to these I love the idea of going to these giant how to posts um, but curious to get your take on on the so I would reverse engineer what I just did one being a copywriter is not a problem you aren't solving a problem so you have to find the problem. So the, the way I would do it, this isn't the right way. This is just a way to do it. And I think this is the easiest, quickest, and um, cheapest way to do it. If I'm a copywriter, I would go to buzzsumo.com. So I'm doing this while we're on the, on the phone here. <laughs> so buzzsumo.com. And I would come up with a couple phrases. Of, I would try to find a how-to post is what I'm trying to say. Try to find a how-to post about somebody talking about copywriting. So you could just type in copywriting. Let's see what, what posts come up. There's got to be some type of how-to post. So let's see. The first article that comes up is from Wired. It's what's up with that? Why it's so hard to catch your own typos? Eh, <laughs> that's kind of lame. Uh, let's see. The, t- the eight types of images that increase the psychology impact of your content. 27 best copywriting formulas. How to tell a captivating story online. That's getting better. Uh, let's see. Mastering the re- copywriting formula to dominate any social media platform. Now, that's an interesting one. That's from Copy Blogger. Okay. So could you be a copywriter for people's social media? So let's say, how would that work? So I don't know what this blog post teaches, but could you turn <laughs> teaching, writing copy for social? Now you're getting more specific. More specific is easier to sell. So could you perhaps sell a service that costs $100 a month? And once a week, you log into my Buffer account where I've already preloaded all my tweets and Facebook messages in and tweak the copy in those to perform better. Like, would that be something I'd pay for? Maybe. Okay. Now, let's go down the list even more here. Let's see. No blog, tra- no blog traffic. Here's a simple strategy to reduce a reader, to re- seduce readers and win clients. Uh, oh, here, here, all right, here's one. Copy blogger again. 51 questions to optimize every element of your online copy. So go to that post see what the most popular one is and offer that as a service. So you're still working within your skill set, which is copywriting, but you're honing in on a very specific thing to offer. And that's kind of the key is getting incredibly specific. So copywriting is hard to sell. Very much Writing so. landing pages for premium courses that sell for over $1,000 is much easier to sell because your client list is really easy to get. You go find people that are selling premium courses that cost over $1,000 audit their sales page for them and offer to rewrite their sales page. Like if you can manually outreach to people, that's a sales engine that can be repeated. So take your broad skill, find a very specific application for it. And I would recommend doing that by finding popular blog posts that teach on that. Because if it's a popular blog post, it's popular for a reason. People resonated with that. They probably realized they had a problem with that and they wanted to share it with everybody else. So that means they're a potential candidate for the post. And then you could offer the people that shared it and other potential clients that fit that general avatar as a customer. Okay, okay. So starting very specific. So instead of like, I want to help restaurants get more customers, I want to help sushi restaurants in San Francisco get more customers, like something, and then you can kind of branch out from there if that doesn't turn out to be enough work or after you've 
you've saturated that market or something. Yeah, and don't even worry about saturating the market. That's such BS. Like when you're starting out, that needs to be the last thing on your mind. The first thing on your mind needs to be leaving your day job. What do you need to leave <laughs> your day job? I need $10,000 a month. Okay, is there enough business in the sushi market in San Francisco to make $10,000? Absolutely. There's some ad agency right now that has a contract with a sushi restaurant in uh, San Francisco that has a retainer that's more than $10,000 with just one restaurant. So yes, you can make $10,000 off all the sushi restaurants in San Francisco. So don't even let your mind evolve to there yet. Just think, how can I solve one person's problem? That's it. That's your initial question that you have to answer. And if you want to start with a general skill set, found a how-to article that's specific about that and offer it, you can go that route. If you don't even know what you want to offer, just find a how-to article that resonates with you, something that you would be interested in, and offer that service as the starting point. And realize you're not marrying that. That's not a lifelong decision. Right. Look at it as a 90-day commitment. So you're committing that for 90 days. You're going you're gonna to give it everything you get. You're going to pitch as many people as you can, and you're going to offer quality service. And at the end of that, if you hit your goal, keep doing it. If you haven't, look back and offer something else. When you talk about finding that one person you want to work with, like that seems that makes it very specific, which I think is, um, I think that's really smart. So actually I was going to say something about the dream 100 from the, from the ultimate sales machine. So if, if you want to expand after that one person, uh, bites, you know, that's a way to expand and say who else, who else might be a fit for that. But what is your, what does your pitch look like? What is your, your, you know, your initial outreach email, I assume, or phone call, um, to this, to this company or person look like? Yeah. You want to make sure you give, you don't want to ask them anything in your initial email. So, um, for example, with HubSpot, I pitched them earlier in this year about doing recurring videos for them like I did for Kissmetrics. Uh, so this is my email. I'll just read the actual email to you. It said, hi, I'm Brian. I'm a huge fan of HubSpot. I especially liked your recent piece on business card design. That's a key sentence. You have to tell them that or show them that you're not just some random Yahoo that wants to buy something or wants them to buy something from you. You have to show them that you're a fan of theirs. So I always just try to reference something that I like that they've done. So I'm a huge HubSpot fan. I especially like your piece on business card design. And I put a link, business card is a link to an article about that. Okay. I work with companies like Kissmetrics and make weekly videos for their blog. Here's one that uh, here's one that I published earlier this week on their site and I put a link to it. Just wanted to email you and see if HubSpot might be interested in a similar series. I'm in a demo for you to show you what it might look like. And I put a link to a video that I actually created for them that was specific for them and had an outro buffer that was HubSpot. And then at the end, I say, is there something you guys would be interested in? So there, there's kind of a couple parts of that. And so let's just walk through that. Number one, relate to something they've already done. Ideally, you can tell them something you've taken action on that they've taught. So if you're uh, in the internet marketing space and you're pitching somebody in the internet marketing space, chances are they have a blog that teaches internet marketing. Mm -hmm. So if you can say, hey, I loved your article on the backlink uh, on the skyscraper technique. Recently, I used the skyscraper technique and got 10 backlinks to my site. That is something that immediately catches the attention of the, of the author, of the owner, because millions of people read, nobody takes action. <laughs> taking action is extremely rare. So if you can show you've taken action, you immediately stand out. The second part of it, is showing, is establishing your reputation. So in this specific email, I talked about how I worked with Kissmetrics. Now, if you're just starting out, you probably heard me read that and said, oh yeah, the only reason you got HubSpot <laughs> is because you already had Kissmetrics. That's such BS. You need to shut up. That's not the case. What you can do, that's where using the how-to article is key. Because instead of saying I work with companies like Kissmetrics, you can say, I saw where you read and shared Brian Dean's post on the skyscraper technique. Immediately, you've done the exact same thing. You've established a third-party validation of your reputation by calling on the person whose article you're about to pitch in the service of. So let me uh, – well, I don't know if I have an example right here handy. It might take me a minute to find it. But you have to establish your reputation. So you can do that. If you are a copywriter, show them some past work you've done. That can do it. If you've never copywritten before and you're trying to sell copywriter service, relate or um, reference back to that post that they're familiar with. If they've shared it, if they would, if they're HubSpot, they know who Moz is and they know who Kissmetrics right. are. So you could reference one of those posts, even if they didn't particularly share it, they would know who that person is. Even if you don't know them, if you don't know that third party, that's fine. That's where that, that uh, strategy really helps. So you would say something like, Hey, I'm a huge fan of HubSpot, especially liked your piece on business card design. Um, 
I read a, a recently, uh, I saw where you and Kissmetrics are, oh, this is a bad email. I need to think this through better. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to set up a landing page at videofruit.com slash hustle. And I'm going to put a few copy variations that somebody could use to pitch somebody if they've never offered the service or anything related to it before. And I'll put a few uh, copy formulas there that you can kind of copy and paste because I'm not able to come up with something really great all kind of off the top of my head. Um, I'll, I'll look back and see what I use for Kissmetrics. I'll talk with Keith and see what he used to pitch a skyscraper technique and put both of those emails for free uh, at videofruit.com slash hustle. You can grab them there. Awesome. Thanks for that, Brian. Yep. Yeah, it's just something that will relate, something that kind of builds authority. Even That's that's the whole point of that line, as, as is my takeaway, right? It's not that like, hey, I'm just some random guy off the street. It's like, hey, I've already worked with Kissmetrics or hey, I, you know, there's some connection, even if you haven't, even if you don't even know Neil or Brian Dean or any of these people like that you're referencing, it's just some association, like by having those words in, in written form in the email can help you. Yeah. So that's the second part. Number one is sh- show them you know who they are by either telling them a win you've had or relating or tell them you're a fan of their recent work. Number two, establish a reputation via past work or via the article. Number three, show them your work for them. So I always make a demo. I make, I spent two hours making a demo video for HubSpot. Okay. And that forces you to be good in your targeting because you can't go making a hundred two hour videos a week. Like you have to target the right customer, but you have to show them the work. So if you're doing the skyscraper technique, go find a list of 50 blogs you would target, you know, show them a list of the blogs with email addresses already found, show them the email you would write and show them a case study of results they could potentially have from it. That will convince me to do it. Uh, a guy named Siggy, um, he does, um, WordPress page loading speed optimization, incredibly specific. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it optimizes your page loading speed on WordPress sites. Uh, after I taught this on my blog a while back, he sent me an email with this basic pitch and had a 15 minute video where he walked through my entire site, showing me things I could do to improve the speed. And then his call to action was, or I could just do all this for you. <laughs> Let me know if you're interested. And guess, guess what? In like three seconds, I responded and said, yeah, I would love for you to do that. And I, you know, he worked for me and sped up my site. Um, so showing your work, not your past work, but showing me uh, a proposal, not in an Excel spreadsheet, but showing me the work you would produce if you worked for me, just completely removes the doubt that I have um, if I haven't seen it before. Even if you reference work you've done, you say, hey, I've worked with Kissmetrics, here you go. Okay, you get my attention. Now, if you want to knock the ball over the fence, show me work you've done for me already, even though I don't even know who you are. That grabs people's attention. Okay. So it would be like if I'm, if I want to sell, you know, a Kindle editing and proofreading service for business authors, I would grab their, uh, grab their book on Kindle and go through the first chapter or something and say like, look, I found, you know, these 10 things that I would change. Yep. Mark it up, have a PDF, yeah, yeah, yeah. It all, maybe put a two minute video introducing yourself and walking over the first couple typos, um, that kind of thing. Yeah. Show the work, do the work ahead of time, spend a couple hours, spend 10 hours, you know, if you're selling a high-end service, spend time on it. It really – don't think quantity. Think quality. That proposal was – and it's not even a proposal. That's probably a bad word for it because you're not even pitching a thing. You're just saying thank you for being so awesome. Here's a thing you can use. Let me know if I can help you install it. Okay. And that's where when they say yes, that's where your service comes into play because it's going to take them a lot of time to install it no matter what it is. Or they could just hire you and you're the easier option. I had somebody pitch me the other day, similar similar to this, where their their service was uh, creating uh, a link, uh, a, a, a expert roundup blog post. Oh yeah. And they said we're gonna, you know, we're gonna find, you know, fifty experts, and we're gonna ask them, you know, what their first side hustle was or something. Yep. And you know, we're gonna compile all this stuff for you. And it's like, okay, that that that's interesting to me. Like, you know, tell me, tell me a little bit more. And then we got into pricing. It was like, well, that's way out of my budget, but, but I appreciate, you know, the pitch and the hustle and everything. So that kind of leads us to pricing. If somebody, if you do get a bite and somebody comes back with, uh, yeah, tell me more or, or what's, you know, we'd love to work with you. What's, what's the next step? Well, let me take that example. What's your paid offering? Oh, I, paid. I have nothing for sale right now, really. I've got a so You have a work with me link on the top, so you have paid consulting of some sort. Yes. So let's take that for instance. Sure. Let's, how could this guy have pitched you better? What he could have done is, one, reference previous work, two, shown his work, three, 
go ahead and put together a list of the 50 experts he would do for you, show an example of an old post, and then show how that would ROI for you. So if he says, hey, I'll write this entire post for you. Here's an example of all the authors I would get. Here's an example of 10 headlines we could potentially run. I've actually studied your blog and realized that the most shared content on your site falls into this category. So I think our uh, roundup post needs to be on this exact topic. And based on my research, I think we can get around 2,000 shares and 800 email opt-ins for you with our promotional strategies. Uh, And based on that information, if we get 800 shares, I think we could convert 10% of those, or let's say 2% of those, into paying customers for you. So that would be 16 customers you get from this. And an average of $200 a customer, that would be $3,200. I'm going to charge you $1,000. So then it, then it goes from a $1,000 pitch to I'm going to make $1,600. Exactly. Or whatever the math was exactly. On. That's an easy yes. Like you have to make it easy. Absolutely. Easy yes. And if you're pitching people that – if you're pitching solo entrepreneurs and they're in their first three years, their revenue model isn't nailed down very well most likely. So you have to be cognizant of that and make sure that whatever you're pitching ties back to ROI – Really on anybody. Like if I, I didn't pitch that angle with HubSpot, but if I would have thought about it to that that level and spent the time to show them the ROI of that based on, you know, it's somewhat of a guess. Like you can see generic, like a lot of times people will talk, talk about their opt-in rates or you can just use, based on my experience, I've seen a 5% opt-in mm-hmm. rate. So if we if if you hit a 5% opt-in rate, that's going to get you 800 email subscribers. And, and if we can get a 2% conversion rate on that, and based on my experience and market research shows we can, then we could turn that into four thousand dollars of business for you. Oh, by the way, I charge a thousand. Would you be willing to pay me a thousand dollars to make you four thousand dollars? Make that trade all day long. <laughs> yeah, all then, day every day. Like, I, like, how many times can we do that? Like, because I like that trade. So that, that's what. And I think a lot of people miss that. They miss the holistic part of it when they're pitching marketing services specifically. Um, is the holistic part? The point of you managing my social media and rewriting that. It's to get me more followers, yes, but it's to get me more shares, which gets me more customers, which pays me more money. So if you can tie the service back to money, which ultimately you can with anything, even if you're selling, dog, teaching my dog how to sit, <laughs> like you can tie that back to service. You can tie that back to money because if my dog isn't sitting, most likely he's probably chewing things up in my house. And if he's chewing things up, it's costing me money. If you can teach him how to sit better, it's going to make me have to replace my furniture less often, buy him less treats. It's going to make my life better. Um, so tie it back to whatever the ROI is, whether that's a dollar figure, whether that's a better life, whatever that is, make sure that you tie it back to that and that will make it an easier yes. Right, right. What's, yeah, what's a new Twitter follower worth to you? You know, and so. Yeah, and it is worth something. Like at the end of the day, it has to be worth something. An email subscriber, like I'm all about list building, but if you don't know what an email subscriber is worth, what's the point? Right. Yeah, that way, that makes it easy to, to say yay or nay on, on something like that. Yeah. Well, very cool. So to uh, to recap, we have step one being identifying the problem. And Brian gave some some interesting ideas on how to do that and kind of diving deep into these uh, these how-to posts that someone else has already done the work for you on. Um, and step two, just re-engineering that solution into a service. Hey, look, um, I know this is time-consuming and it actually takes a lot of work. So uh, would you mind if I take care of that for you? And it's hustle. You know, it's not, you know, it's not... <laughs> there's there's the dream of of the internet marketing world right sell sell a digital product and you know build it build it once and sell it a million times so that's the cool part about this though it can become that so what happens is you start offering this as a service and then you find a a system that you go through to do that so for me i started with uh, offering video services and then i created a course on how to do that same thing and which now sells as a digital asset and then this year, I've been focused on list building. So I built my own list, and then I started helping other people build their list. And now I'm working on building a course about list building. So it's an, it's an evolving process. You start with a service to figure out the exact pain point you're solving. And then you could create a software product. You can create an app. You can create a course. You can create a coaching program specifically for that track, which you can charge premium for. You can do any number of things once you have a very exact thing that you're offering. Because guess what? Like the, the course that I'm building right now is how to get 10,000 email subscribers. Nobody else has anything like that. That's incredibly specific. Right. Because that's what that was my goal for this year was to get to 10,000 email subscribers. So I accomplished that. And then I helped other people get to 10,000 email subscribers. And now now that I've kind of been through that process and know it, I'm going to create a course to teach a bunch of people how to get to 10,000 email subscribers. Um, so it's, it's a process you can go through. You start as a service. 
but you can evolve to whatever you want to evolve to. Yeah. But the goal again is going back to the very beginning. If your goal is to quit, is quit quit your job as soon as possible. Start with the service. The digital product is long term. Absolutely, absolutely. Then the third step would be finding that that one person, that one ideal customer who you want to work with. Uh, send them a proposal that is both flattering and compelling by giving away you know something that's of value to them uh, you know, in that first in that first contact. Do the service for them as much as far as you, if you can do a complete video, do a complete video. If you're doing backlinks, it's hard to do a backlink outreach without their permission, so don't do that. But take it as far as you can get without them pressing send. Do all the work and show it to them. So take it as far as you can. Cool, cool, and then tie it back to to ROI if if possible. Yep, and then step number five is give give them a must have experience for free. So that's creating the proposal and think about it. Think about it as that. Think about it as what is your must have experience. So if you're um, doing the backlink thing, the, the ultimate thing is getting the link. Now you can't show them that before they have their permission, but you can do everything before that. If your deal is teaching your dog how to sit, <laughs> what can you do to give them that must have experience for free before they actually pay you? Do that. I'm trying to think of the dog one. <laughs> Can you put your dog on uh, on Skype with me? Let me try and uh, get him to sit here. Um, yeah. So if you're a premium, let's say you're a uh, you're a dog. <laughs> what do they call them? Dog trainer, I guess. And you you just you're a generalist, so you teach dogs all kind of stuff. But you wanted to hyper hyper focus, and instead of uh, taking 500 clients at 50 dollars a month, you wanted to get 10 clients at 2,000 dollars a month. But that'd be a pretty solid pretty solid plan. So you target one. You have to target people that are making over two hundred fifty thousand, probably over four hundred thousand dollars a year. So that really homes in your target market. And then maybe you target people that own greyhounds, like people that have um, have rescued greyhounds after they finish their racing career. I know, like in our city, every time I go to uh, Petco, there's a bunch of greyhounds out front, and people are crazy about those oh, dogs. Okay. And, they, and there's all, all rehabilitation they have to go through after they go through their racing career and everything. So you focus on people that make over $400,000 a year that have greyhounds that need to train them how to be house pets. So you create a video. Once you target an exact individual, maybe you set up a booth in front of Petco and sit outside the greyhound booth and collect people's names and phone numbers and make them a video showing you training your dog how to sit and email it to them and say, hey, Jim, I met you last Saturday. I noticed you, know, you talked to me about your dog having a problem with adjusting. Um, the number one key I found, the keystone habit with training greyhounds, is first making them feel at home. And to do that, you have to kennel train them. So I made you a video showing you a few pointers on what you could do with your dog, Sally, to teach her how to be kennel trained. Uh, check it out. And if you want me to help your dog uh, individually, just shoot me a message. I'd be happy to. That starts a conversation with leads into a $2,000 a month retainer contract to teach their greyhound how to be a better dog. That's how you would pitch that. I love it, man. Man, you get so detailed on this stuff. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody, you got to check out um, videofruit.com and videofruit.com slash hustle for those uh, those email template examples. Thank you, Brian, for putting that together. And thank you so much for, for joining me on the show. Definitely a ton of uh, value delivered for, for everyone here. We'll, we'll wrap things up with your number one tip for Side Hustle Nation. Two things. Number one, go buy the book, Built to Sell. It specifically talks about building an ultra-specific service-based company, which doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be what you're married to, but it's the best way to start, the quickest way to start. Okay. Now, number two, get extremely specific. Don't be a copywriter. <laughs> be a copywriter for sales pages of online courses that sell for over $2,000. Um, get extremely specific um, and just kill it, man. Just keep, don't, if, if it doesn't work the first time, it most likely it won't anyway. Um so just scrap that, pick another thing and try it. And scrap that thing, pick another thing and try it until you find one that works. And you will know it when it works because it'll have traction that the other ones didn't. I love it. I love it. Brian, thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Nick. This edition of the Side Hustle Show is brought to you by my Inner Circle Mastermind. This is an intimate group of fellow entrepreneurs and side hustlers who come together with me on a weekly basis to share resources, to get um, honest feedback and get direction, and to hold each other accountable um, to our goals. So if that sounds like the, the kick in the pants that you need to get 2015 off to a hot start, I urge you to, uh, to stop by sidehustlenation.com slash join and uh, submit an application. 
and we'll uh, we'll schedule a quick intro call, see if we can't uh, get something going there. Capacity is limited, and groups are forming now for a mid to late January kickoff. Again, that's at sidehustlenation.com slash join. So what do you think of Brian's ideas in this call? I think he makes a, a compelling case for service businesses over product or, or passive income, quote, passive income type businesses, right? So if you're, if you're looking for the fastest exit, right, maybe not the best exit, maybe not the most long-term viable or attractive exit, but the fastest way out, I think the methods he laid out in, uh, in this call are pretty, uh, pretty solid. But let me know your take in the comments of this episode and be sure to grab the, the free PDF with all my notes and highlights from, uh, from the call with Brian at sidehustlenation.com slash 87 or through the link in the episode description of your podcast player app. Thanks so much for tuning in. Let's make sure we make 2015 our best year yet. So until next time, go out there and make something happen. And I'll see you next week in episode 88. It's a repeat guest who's found six-figure success in a brand new business. So stay tuned for that one, and I'll see you then. Thanks for listening to the Side Hustle Show at www.sidehustlenation.com. 